Welcome back. This is the first in a series of in-depth lessons on compositing in Blender. Compositing is a post-production technique of combining multiple images or multiple sources. We will see later what we are talking about to create a final processed image. This is used to give that final touch to our work or just to combine several different images together in a similar way as you might work with layers in GIMP. Also starting with version 3.5 of Blender we are given the ability to see in real time. What happens when we go to edit the compositing within the 3D viewport? Let's start by looking at a very quick example of compositing. This is a basic scene that we will now launch the rendering of. We have already seen in the basic course how to frame a scene and how to launch the rendering so let's launch it immediately and see that Blender opens us. A new window that contains the image editor, we see it up here from the selector and this image editor shows us precisely an image that contains the render result which is the result of the rendering. What we can do once we get our render result is to move on to the compositing phase. To go and enhance it, modify it, add elements or change some aspects of it, let's close the blender render window and go to activate the compositing layout. This layout is nothing more than a different arrangement of windows than the default ones. So it's still Blender, but simply with windows arranged differently. We have here at the top the editor called Compositor. We see it here from the menu at the top left, where we can see just that the Compositor icon is active. And at the bottom we have the Dope Sheet Editor, which we're not going to use right now though. We click on Use Nodes to enable the use of nodes. Two nodes appear, one input and one output. We talked about nodes already in the basic course when we talked about materials but also when we talked about precisely about compositing. However, let's look at them in a little bit more detail. Nodes are a kind of little piece of algorithm code that takes data on the left, processes it and throws it back out on the right. In the case of input nodes such as render layer, we have no input data on the left because precisely it is a node that is born to give us information so it does not receive any whereas the composite node does not have output data on the right but only has data input on the left. So the flow is from left to right. Anything in between that goes through this connection line will be additional nodes that will be used to modify our end result. To see in real time what we are doing we can use an output type node called the viewer node. With shift A we invoke the add command go to the output submenu and select the viewer node this is the node that allows us to visualize what is happening inside our scene. If we go to connect the output image to the input of the viewer node, we see that our image appears in the background of the editor. With the keyboard shortcut CTRL space, we have the ability to maximize the editor and thus make all the others disappear. Actually, they have not disappeared, but have been momentarily hidden. To return to the previous view, we press CTRL space again or press on the back to previous key. We can enlarge or reduce the size of the background image with the V key or with the key combination Alt V. Alternatively, we can act on these four control points to go directly to change the size of the resulting image. By clicking and dragging on this X, instead we go to move the image itself. Using the mouse wheel, instead we can enlarge or diminish the set of nodes and then by clicking on the mouse wheel, we can move them around as we would normally navigate in an editor. We have seen that there are two output nodes, the composite which is used to save our final image, we will see later how, and viewer node to see in real time what is happening. However, we see that there are two connectors coming out of the render layer image value and every time we will be forced to put nodes in both connections. To do this first, there is a very convenient element called reroute that we can insert with the shift, a combination to invoke the add command we go to the layout group and we select reroute. You see this yellow dot appears, we're going to insert it in one of the two links, so we're going to always click on the dot and drag the link to the node, for example, viewer. Now the image information comes to the reroute node and then it is redistributed to both the composite node and the viewer node. By doing this we will have a much more orderly situation and easier to manage. If we wanted to move the reroute, this yellow dot, we cannot click and drag because Blender would interpret this will of ours into creating a new link. How then to move? This element, well as we would do within the 3D viewport with any mesh, any object, we press the G key. The G key invokes the grab command that allows us to move it. 
as in the 3D viewport, we can constrain the displacement on the X and Y axis by pressing the corresponding keys. We were talking about a quick example of compositing. Let's go to vary, for example, the color of the image. With Shift A, we go to call the Add command, and in the color group, we go to select color balance. A node appears that this time has connectors on both the left and the right. What does it mean? It means that it takes information from our left, processes it, and throws it out on the right. What are the types of information? We can see it by the color of the connectors. When we see a yellow colored dot, it means that we are processing color type information, therefore images of RGB type information when we find a gray dot instead. It means that we are dealing with numeric type information or even black and white images. For example, the alpha channel is a kind of image that allows us to distinguish whether a given pixel is transparent or not. With values ranging from 0 to 1 for each individual pixel, we will be shown through this channel the transparency of the image. We will see later on some practical aspects. Coming back to us, we inserted this color balance node. We are going to drag it to the line connecting image and output nodes. We see that when the node goes over the link line, it turns white. And Blender with this informs us that it has understood that we want to insert the node inside this link. So we drop the mouse and we see that automatically the image information has been connected with the color balance information of the same name. And in output, the image has in turn been connected with the reroute to go into composite and into viewer. This particular node allows us to go and vary the color balance. Now we won't go into detail, let's give it a try. For example, let's go vary some of these colors, let's see how they are changed in our image. The factor value is a value that goes from 0 to 1. You can click with the mouse cursor and drag to vary this value. And it is the amount of application of this node with respect to the information passing through it. So if we set a value of 0.5, it will mean that this node will influence our image by only 50%. If we set it to 1 instead, the influence will be 100%. Let's try entering another node. For example, Distort Lens Distortion, and we are going to put it right after the Color Balance node. Let's try giving a distortion value and see how the image is changed even quite significantly. At any time, we can see what the starting image looked like by holding down the CTRL Shift key and clicking on the Render Layer node. By doing this, Blender creates a quick link directly to the Viewer node. If we CTRL click and press on the color balance, the link is made instead from the selected node, bypassing everything that comes after that, so Lens Distortion. Finally, if we want to go back to seeing exactly what we had planned in our node scheme, we can always CTRL Shift click and press on the reroute. Then very quickly, we can go through the various steps the various stages of our node group to see the effect. Finally, let's see how to save our image when we have finished our compositing. Let's say this is the result we wanted to get, and so we want to save it. To do this, let's enable the image editor. Let's select Viewer node from the drop-down menu. Then let's go to Image and click Save. Well, before we end this lesson, let's instead go over how to enable real-time compositing so we can see it inside the 3D viewport. Let's click on Back to Previous, then go back to the default layout by clicking on the Layout button right here at the top. To enable the compositing view, let's click in the drop-down menu that is to the right of the shading menu, and then click on Camera if we want to enable compositing only in the camera view, or Always if we want to enable compositing always. Let's see the difference. Let's click on Camera. In this case, it tells me Compositor is not supported in this platform. I then open Blender Preferences. I go to System right now. I am using an Apple computer, so I enable GPU. Metal and I restart Blender so I can get it working. Lo and behold, once I restart Blender, the buttons are enabled. And in camera view, I see the compositing effect. But if I, I rotate the view, this effect disappears. Let's go click on Always instead now to see that this effect is applied from any viewpoint. This can happen because actually when we look at something through the 3D viewport, we are actually looking through a kind of virtual camera. And so these distortions and these color changes are applied in real time to this very virtual camera that allows us to see through the 3D viewport. Well, that's it for this lesson. If you'd like to receive updates, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. In the description of this video, you will find links to the topics covered in this lesson. You will also find the option to download the handouts for this course. As always, I thank you for following and I will see you again soon.